Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to tell you why your Bitcoin wallet address always changes. So let's get started. One of the most common questions that I get in my YouTube comments and in emails is, why does my Bitcoin wallet address keep changing? A different but related question is, can I use the same Bitcoin address over and over again if I want to? So basically the reason that your Bitcoin address keeps changing is that that feature is built in to the Bitcoin protocol. It's not really wallet specific, although some wallets implement this feature and others do not. So if you have a Bitcoin wallet that always uses the same address, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, but most wallets will implement this feature that generates a brand new address each time you send some Bitcoin to the wallet. So I'm going to demystify this a little bit and show you how it works in practice. I'm going to use my Ledger Live. And I'm going to go to one of my Bitcoin accounts. Uh, this one is called Bitcoin Main, and it's pretty much my go-to Bitcoin account. Now, the reason that this feature is implemented in the Bitcoin protocol is, in a short answer, privacy. When you send Bitcoin uh, across the Bitcoin blockchain, that is a public transaction. If you're not aware, the Bitcoin blockchain is transparent Anybody can look up transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain. So if you want someone to send you Bitcoin and you provide them a Bitcoin address for them to do so, they can look at that address and see all of the transactions that have come in on that address and they can see the current balance of your wallet. You may not want this. For example, this particular wallet has about $1,000 worth of Bitcoin in it. And if someone wants to send me $20 worth of Bitcoin, I really don't want them to see how much Bitcoin I have in my wallet. I just want to give them an address that's sort of isolated from all of that. So I'll demonstrate this with a wallet to wallet transfer first. If I do a receive in my Bitcoin wallet and hit continue, the wallet will generate an address for me. This is a unique sending address. I'll copy this into my clipboard. We'll go over to a different wallet. I have a wallet here that's got a small amount of Bitcoin in it. And we'll just assume that this is a wallet belonging to a friend or a customer that wants to send me $20 for, say, a cup of coffee or a bag of coffee, right? 20 bucks is pretty high for a cup of coffee. So I'll provide this Bitcoin address to him or her and they'll send a certain amount of Bitcoin. Let's just say it's $5 worth of Bitcoin. So they're gonna send me $5 worth of Bitcoin. Since this is coming from my own wallet, I'll go ahead and authorize the transaction. Right, and off it goes. All right, and let's go check my main wallet. And we can see there that that uh, $5 came into my wallet. Now, suppose that the person that sent that money took that wallet address and then went over to a Bitcoin Explorer to check. There are lots of Bitcoin Explorers that you can use. All right, blockchain.com is one of the most popular ones. All right, so he can put that Bitcoin address into a Blockchain Explorer and look at the status of that wallet. Now notice here that it says the current value of this address is $4.98, which means as far as he knows, I only have $5 worth of Bitcoin in this wallet. But if we look at the uh, total value of the wallet, it's much higher than that, right? He cannot see the rest of the transactions or the rest of the balances in the wallet. Now notice that in my Ledger Live that I have a huge long list of transactions that have occurred in this wallet and I have a total balance reading up here that only I can see. As the person that controls this wallet, I'm the only one that can see this. Now let's take a look at how this address generation works in practice. 
So let's go over to a cryptocurrency exchange. I've got some balances in Bitcoin on uh, some crypto exchanges that I'd like to send over to the wallet. Now, the first thing we'll do is hit receive. Now, this is a ledger-based wallet, so I can do a confirmation with my device. Uh, the Bitcoin address will actually show up on my device. I'll, I'll be able to double check it. And there it is, uh, ends in uh, GAA. Now, if all I really want to do is just send some Bitcoin to this wallet, I don't even need to have the device attached. I can skip that confirmation by clicking don't have your device and get the address just from Ledger Live. The wallet, the outer facing portion of the wallet has all the information that it needs to generate receiving addresses, right? I don't need to connect the device every single time I want to generate an address. Notice it's the same address, right? So uh, let's try it one more time. Same address. What gives? I thought that the Bitcoin wallet generated a new address every time I asked for an address. Well, not quite. It's going to give you the exact same address until you actually transfer some crypto into the wallet. So let's take the address. Let's go over to our Coinbase account. Let's paste in that address and send a little bit of that Bitcoin into the wallet. We'll hit continue here and we'll go ahead and send it off. Now we can go back over to the wallet and monitor. And now we can see that the $25 has arrived in the wallet. Now let's go ahead and generate that receiving address again. Ah, now it's different, okay? So it will continue to give you the same receiving address until you actually get some Bitcoin into that wallet. Now let's go ahead and uh, search for that on the Bitcoin Blockchain Explorer. And you can see there that now it's telling me that that particular address has a balance of around $25 worth of Bitcoin. And it only has one transaction. Now, it looks a little strange because it came from an exchange. So uh, the exchange was probably uh, sending out from a bigger wallet. So there's a little more uh, complication arising in that, uh, deposit, in that withdrawal. But you can see there, among all of these transactions, see, notice there's like 56 others. And there's mine. So Coinbase sent out a bunch of Bitcoin to a lot of different wallets, and I just happen to be among them. But the balance of my wallet only shows my transaction. So now we have a brand new uh, Bitcoin receiving address for this wallet. What about that old address? Does it still work? Well, let's try it out. We'll go over to Binance US. I'll do a withdrawal of my Bitcoin. I'll go ahead and send it all. And I'll paste in that old address, right? The one we used for Coinbase. Let's go back over to the wallet and check. All right, and now the Bitcoin from my Binance US exchange has arrived and my balance has gone up. But let's go over to the Bitcoin Explorer And let's search for that same address again. Ah, now you can see that there's uh, more than one transaction in this wallet address, right? I've got a total of two transactions and I've got a higher total balance because both transactions that came in on that address are showing up on this public address. Let's go ahead and look at that previous one that we did, the wallet to wallet transfer. Let's copy that address into our clipboard and search for that one. Okay, so that address still shows only one transaction 
and only a balance of uh, $4.98. And now you can see that the reason that the Bitcoin wallet generates a brand new receiving address each time is to compartmentalize the blockchain history of that wallet. So if someone sends you Bitcoin, they really are only going to see their transaction unless you reuse the address. So the question uh, would arise, should I reuse an address over and over again? Well, it depends on the type of address it is. So a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges will allow you to save addresses and reuse the same address over and over again to make withdrawals. And that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, really. It doesn't really matter if Coinbase can see the history of all the withdrawals you've made from Coinbase. They have their own records for that anyway. So they basically know how much you've withdrawn from your account. Uh, the same goes for Binance US. If you want to use the same address over and over again to make withdrawals, that's fine. Now, there is a term for this, and they call it whitelisting. Some exchanges force you to whitelist addresses, and this is a security feature on their end to make sure that it is a valid address and that it is your address. By forcing users to whitelist, uh, it prevents bots from coming in and making quick withdrawals. So the security on the end of the exchange would tend to favor whitelisting and only withdrawing to one address so that they know it's your address and there's no questions asked when you come in to make your withdrawals, right? Now, uh, suppose you're running a small business and accepting Bitcoin. Well, in that case, you really don't want to reuse the same address over and over again because then all of your customers will see all of the other transactions from all of the other customers, and they'll see the total balance of Bitcoin in your account. And that's not really a good idea to, to have customers see how much Bitcoin you're holding in your wallet. It can also be a problem if you have a lot of different customers paying different prices for the same thing. If a customer can see the transaction history of all of your other customers, they might see that they're paying more than others and want to try to bargain you down, right? So a good businessman plays his cards close to his chest, doesn't reveal too much information to each of his customers. So if it's a cryptocurrency exchange, reuse that address. It's not going to be a problem. It's not really going to affect your privacy because the exchange already knows your withdrawal history. But if you're running a small business, or even if it's your own personal Bitcoin wallet and friends occasionally send you Bitcoin, you'll want to take advantage of the features of a Bitcoin wallet and let it generate a brand new sending address each time so your friends, family, or customers don't see the transaction history of others or the total balance of your wallet. I hope this was helpful. If there's any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.